So, out of nowhere yesterday during the fight card, Paul Felder announces his retirement from... M Are you about to use Paul Felder as well, bro? You better pick somebody else. I'm not trying to do a mirror match. Come on. Pick somebody else. Come on. You want to pick somebody else. You don't want to do a mirror match. There we go. Charles Oliveira. I like that. Let's go. But yeah, man, Paul Felder announces his retirement from MMA. And honestly speaking, man, like, I'm happy for the man. I really am. I'm glad that he des he decided to, to walk away. Because right now he's currently on a two-fight. Well, he was currently on a two-fight uh, losing streak. He had a loss to Dan. Let me see. Yeah, it was Dan Hooker and Rafael Dos Anjos. And um, two hard-fought fights. Oh, really? I see you're in a, you're one of them moods, huh? One of those moods that you want to just start taunting right away. But man, Paul Felder, two losses in a row, definitely one of those situations where a fighter can easily find himself in, you know that trap? You know that trap that we've seen fighters enter, that one more, just one more. That one more trap. That trap of, man, I don't want to go out on a loss. I don't want my final fight to be a loss. I got to get a win. And then you keep fighting. And keep losing. And keep losing. I'm not saying that Paul would have lost his next fight. But there's a very good possibility he could have. You know? With MMA these days, man, it is just as possible you're going to get beat as it is possible you're going to win. I mean, it's always been like that. But more so these days. And Paul handled it the right way. He handled it the very smart way. He's like, I'm not I'm not gonna fall into this trap where I'm gonna keep trying to go out on top. I mean everybody wants to go out on top, right? Like, everybody wants to go out like GSP. Win your last fight, come back, win a championship fight in the in the in the heavier class, and then leave with a win on top. Everybody wants to do it like that. Fighters don't want to do it like DC or BJ Penn or Paul Felder, but I mean, he got it. The in intelligent ones realize that it's just a losing battle, man. You know, I kind of I compare it to people that, like, this is gonna be a very weird comparison. Can I please get back up to my? Get out of here. That's a reversal. I want to get back to my feet. But yeah, the way I look at it, it's kind of like I've I've met some people that want a specific gender like you know they're, they're having kids maybe they have a bunch of girls or they have a bunch of boys and they're like i want a girl i just i want a girl and they keep having kids and keep having kids you keep having kids i actually know somebody like that from Niger from nigeria this woman that lived in the same apartment complex that we lived in she had like like 10 boys not no joke had like 10 boys and i remember she would like come over, and my mom would like, dude, are you? It's you got. And she just kept getting pregnant every year. She's pregnant. I mean, the woman was just, she was just a baby making factory for real. She was just getting, getting pregnant because she wanted a girl, and she just kept telling my mom, one more, one more, one more, one more. And of course, another boy. That's just how it goes sometimes. Got him. It happens that way for a lot of people, man. Let me just try one more. This time it's gonna be a girl. This time it's gonna be a boy. And boom, nope, nope, wrong, wrong. And this is like, this is a trap that I myself, I'm not gonna fall into. Cause I'm having kids. <laughs> like, but you know, just a random comparison to make to what happens in MMA sometimes with fighters. I'm very glad that Paul is not making that mistake. He's going to walk away. He has something. I mean, it's not like MMA. Nope. You didn't get this one, brother. It's not like mixed martial arts is like all he has. Like fighting is not all he has. He's a very good commentator. Um, he has done a very good job of diversifying his income. This dude is done. Woo! Body. The 
the body again. You're trapped. Nice. Nice combo. And with that front kick. I love it when they're trapped like this against the cage and they're not really doing everything they can to get out of there and you just pick them apart. I'm gonna front kick this man. Oh my god. Get up, brother. Boom, boom. To the body again. Ah, oh, I love doing that with Paul. Again. Oh my god. When the ragdoll in UFC 4 plays out as intended, it is absolutely brutal and emphatic. That was crazy. That was a crazy. Can you please? Head kick the like button for that one. Boom! Oh my god. Beautiful ragdoll. Of course, the replay doesn't show the whole entire thing properly. Yikes! Leave a like for that one. Let's move on. Okay. We're fake. Oh man, this dude is he's pretty good. And, oh, god damn it, I wish I ran into this freaking guy with someone else. Dustin Poirier is a bitch to strike with when when you're fighting a good player. Let's go. Alright, let's get it. In one of the biggest moments for women Brazilian fighters, Amanda Nunes caught there and retained her title. If you guys have never used Dustin Poirier in this game, you, like, you don't understand how good striking in this game can feel, honestly. He feels so freaking good, man, so good, even from Southpaw. Even if you're not very good from Southpaw, Dustin Poirier is one of the Southpaws in this game that you can use very well. He's very comfortable. He's not like Conor McGregor, you know, he's not like Conor where, like, Con Conor... Like the, the 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 likes of Connor and and Jones and Izzy and Wonder Boy. I mean, these guys kind of take some getting used to. Dustin Poirier is. I compare Dustin Poirier to Robert Whitaker in this game. Comparing him to Robert Whitaker, I compare him to to Petra Jan. There's some fighters in the game that are just just very easy to get into. I mean, difficult to master, but just very good as you. As a pickup player, as a, as a pickup character, I meant to say. The diamond is one of them. He feels amazing. I mean, look at this. The way his hands are flowing right now, I can feel. I mean, these these jabs, these hooks. I'm going to do a showcase for Dustin. Especially this fight coming up for Connor. I really enjoy using him. Way more than I enjoy using Connor, like for sure. He feels a lot better than Connor. With that one, the body. Paul doesn't. Paul is not bad either. I mean, Paul Felder feels okay. It's just a little bit difficult to compete with him against certain characters controlled by certain players. It just gets very difficult. Turn him back. Some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Whiffed. Nice. Check that one. 45 seconds remain in the round. Nice right hand. Oh, he's feeling it now. Nice combination there by Fourier. 30 seconds to go in the round. Whoa. Right hand on point. His leg kicks are outstanding, and you saw a great example of that just there. To the body right there. Okay, good first round. My guess is that he won that first round. Maybe I did. I don't know. 
I, mean, I know I landed some some clean shots. Yeah, look at that. Maybe I won the first round. We landed some pretty good shots in that round. He also landed some good shots as well. But I think maybe we did enough to get to secure the first round. Let's just keep it going that way. Hopefully, Paul Felder's health stats holds up. If as long as his health stat holds up, I should be okay. It's just like I start to get worried when your fighter's health stats kind of does not hold up to the other. Because, like, D Dustin is going to be able to take a lot more damage than I can than I can take. Which means that if you're using these lower-rated characters against a good player, you got to be you gotta be really perfect. At least as close to perfect as you possibly can with your defense. Like you can't be, really be taking shots. In my body and my head right now. Dustin Poirier has always been good from like UFC 3. He has always been good. Whiffed. Careful with that though. Body. And you guys will notice. You'll notice what my opponent is doing. The push-pull that I talked to you guys about. You'll notice, unlike some people that I face, he's not just like backing up non-stop. You'll notice it's a push and a pull. When I back up, he moves forward. When I move forward, he gives ground. You know, he doesn't let me just back up and recover whenever I feel like it. So you'll see that. That's how he's able to hit me. That's how he's able to get, like, pile up the damage he's piling up right now. That's what I try to explain to people. Which, by the way, it's like some of you have, some, like, a, quite a few of you have requested. Oh, look at my head. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I should write a book. <laughs> you guys keep asking me, like, oh, what the hell was that? I guess that was a, a block counter he hit me with. Yeah, my head is damaged right now, my body is damaged, and right now my legs are getting damaged as well. He was supposed to back up on that. Alright, good round. That was his round for sure. Yeah, my fighter is Wilton. He's definitely Wilton. Which is what I that's what I expected. Usually that's what happens. Like when you like I said when you're using uh when you're using a lower rated character, the first thing that you notice is that your fighter's health stats kind of betrays you a little bit. Um But you only notice that kind of stuff when you're facing a good player anyways. Like it's like that's when you really notice that stuff. DC didn't take him long to find his nice. Body. Ugh, I can't get a rock. God damn it. I'm landing some clean shots and no rocks. Oh. Nice slip straight. My leg is fucked. Come on. Ooh. Ay, yeah, yeah. Guess we're gonna stay south, Paul. And he landed the right hand there. With that. Just over three minutes now to go. 
Head kick. Nothing there. Oh my goodness. Can I survive this? There we go. My head damn my head health is so bad. I'm so low. No. Oh boy. Oh boy. Head health is so freaking low. Basically, at this point, I have to be perfect. I have to try to be perfect. I'm out. Every single shot he lands right now is gonna be a rock. Every every single shot is gonna be a, like right there. Yeah. Imagine. Slip into a hook. Ah, uh, yeah. Come on. Can I get out of there? Yeah. I'm done. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Good shit. Good fight. Good fight. That was, uh... That was, uh... That went, that, that went downhill from round number two. Went downhill from round number two. Wasn't able to... Wasn't able to get my head held. I wasn't able to keep my head safe enough. And every little shot was getting me out of there. This dude is good. He's good. I fought him a few times before in uh, in my other account. So I, I definitely know how good he is. Alright, we're going to get one more fight. See if I can redeem that. I can't go out on a loss. <laughs> Okay, so from the uh, <laughs> from the uh, from the frying pan to the fire, I think that's how it's set. Now I'm facing T4H reverse. Actually, I know how to beat this guy. I know how to beat him. Um, I know you guys saw he has two wins over me, but that's really that doesn't really mean much. I know how to beat him. I know what to expect from him. He actually we fought earlier today. We fought earlier today when I was waiting for um, when I was trying to get a fight in the lightweight division. I kept getting featherweight, and I kept like backing out, and it got to a point where I was like, okay, if I keep backing out, they're going to time me out, and I'm not going to be able to search anymore, so I was like, I'm just going to pick whatever, and so I picked Max Holloway, ran into this freaking guy, and kind of goofed around in that fight, he got the win, but um, I think he had Jose Aldo, I think so, that was actually a decent fight, but like I said, it was just kind of, he kept like pull paul countering me but we're ready for that right now i'm using paul felder i'm not gonna i'm gonna get him because he this is a, this is a, this is another good t4h this is another good t4h guy t4h reversed he's like i like this guy um i like reversed he's uh He's one of the T4H guys that, that that plays the game correctly. He really does. His style, there's nothing wrong with his style at all. He's pretty clean. He generally uses the character properly. I mean, you see what he's trying to do with Justin Gaethje? Just, yeah, I like this guy. But we're going to get him right now. What I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for him to start pull countering. The moment he starts doing that, because it's it's only a matter of time. He loves he loves the pull counters. The moment he starts doing that, we're gonna use that against him. We're gonna pull his pull and get him. So for now, he's not yet. He's most likely going to. The moment I start teeing off a combo, like right there. There we go. There we go. There's the pull counters. All right. Let's see if he gets horny for him. Just misses there with the left. Wet kick. Yeah, he goes southpaw. Now, the one thing I do want, like, I want to see if I can pin him against the cage. I do my best work when I can pin my opponent against the cage and have him right there. So, if I could figure out a way to sneak my way to get him against the cage, I will be fine. The body. Ah. 
just misses with the jab. There we go. There we go. Oh, whiffed. God damn it. Nice. Nice. Good round, brother. Ugh, it's corn tell him I'm landing too many body shots. Perhaps. Perhaps. Thank you, sir. Let's get it. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are gonna take their toll as this fight goes on. Body. Oh, left hook. Left hook, Larry. Got him. Uh-huh. This is where the pull counters usually start. But this is where I want him, right here. This is where I want him. Oh, rolling thunder. Gets countered with a jab. There we go. The sequences with Paul Felder against the cage with that switch kick to the body. And with that front kick to the head, though. He's blocking his body now. The front kick's right there. Yes, it is. Oh, ho. Oh. Yeah, buddy. Good shit, bro. Ah, uh, good shit. I like this guy. Definitely like fighting him. He's uh, he's fun to play. He's very fun to play. He makes the game fun. He makes it's. Uh, I mean, it's a, a rare. It's rare. It's very rare. Very rare. Very rare to run into like a a good player, highly ranked, that actually makes the game fun. It's usually like the higher you go, the better the player you run into, the worse the experience gets. But like I said, with uh, with T4H, with this dude right here, it's the experience is always pretty good. Always pretty good. But this is where we are going to end it right here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, you know what to do to that like button. You know what to do. Bang the like button. Bang the like button. Don't forget to get it wet, though. All right. That's it. That's it. Oh, boy. Congratulations to Paul Felder for a successful retirement. Congratulations for not becoming a vegetable in the world of MMA and getting knocked out over and over again chasing a win. Congratulations for being smart, for being intelligent. Congratulations for having multiple sources of income to allow him to still make ends meet. Not just make ends meet, but be comfortable without having to get punched in the face anymore to do that congratulations overall for making smart decisions throughout his career he had a successful career he had some very notable very good wins in there um overall happy for the man proud proud of him proud and happy for him but we're gonna end it right here thank you for watching you guys are amazing leave a like if you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys later with a brand new one as always stay safe peace out.